likely be finished before things get lower than 55. So still a fairly comfortable night. It is 62 degrees at time of start here on grounds at the University of Virginia. Uh, high point, team that under the direction of fifth year head coach Zach Haynes has set themselves up as the standard in their conference of the Big South, coming in with eight wins, a couple of setbacks and four draws. And in league play, no blemishes in terms of losses, a 5-0 and one mark in the Big South. And for Virginia, also an eight-win squad at 8-3 and three now, 4-2 and one in the ACC with all that impact of recent days. You know those players that uh, have really been emerging of late on both sides really want to continue to play at their highest level as these two squads prep for postseason, which as hard as it is to believe is now all but upon these soccer squads around the country. Session Virginia, of course, in the dark home unis with everything trimmed up in orange on this day at High Point with uh, all that purple trimming up the lighter of the uniforms as they battle the 14th ranked team in the country. Familiar opponents in many ways. Eighth meeting between these two. And before anything can take place on this quick push from Reese Miller, it will be a goal kick coming for High Point. Here's a glance at the keeper, Josh Karen, who handles things in goal for High Point, opposite Batroni, who is in there for Virginia on this night. Those two responsible for trying to work uh, what has been a familiar refrain for both these squads, an effort to secure a, a clean sheet and keep the momentum going, which is true on both sides. Mentioned this is the eighth meeting all time. Three, three, and one, the split. So Virginia is three, two, and zero oh in matches played here at Clocker and have won the last three, unbeaten against the Panthers in the Gelnovac era. So this is a team year in and year out in the mix for national recognition and tournament consideration once again right at the head of the class in the Big South and a physical oh, start here is the takedown. We'll see a north to the turf. Virginia just off the victory in the Commonwealth Clash and it was an impressive one. 3-0 the final against Virginia Tech back on Friday the 20th. And speaking of Anor, who was down momentarily, picked up his second brace of the season, also credited with the game winner, the fifth time. That the Virginia youngster, the Virginia standout, has notched a game winner for the Who's this season. But that 3-0 victory in the Commonwealth Clash coming after a 2-1 win over Pitt right here at Klockner following draws against Boston College and Hofstra. That was in behind back-to-back -back victories. Three TSU. And of course, Louisville, which was another of those three nothing finals for Virginia. So that's really the snapshot that you take of the recent stretch for Virginia in which the, the Cavaliers in ACC play snatched those 10 points with 12 out there for the taking and found themselves now in the top tier in the division as a result. High point led by Finn McRobb who has five goals. He's the leading goal scorer. 
though Jefferson Amaya gets so much of the attention because of his 14 overall points to pace the squad and his six assists. And Amaya is the player that will certainly consistently take the looks. 30 shots to his credit thus far. On the season, you put him together with McRobb, who has played well over 1,250 minutes and made 14 starts. And, and that duo, because of their impact, and particularly the way this group works together with McRobb getting the focus on set-piece opportunities from the corner, something you really keep an eye on with this high-point squad. It is the tandem you watch. Battle forward in the midfield, and here's High Point with Kendall giving chase. Mitch and Amaya and McRobb. Veeman, Kendall, Kruger, Ignacio. Yance Pineda. Abril among those getting the start alongside the keeper we introduced to you. Karen. And here is a challenge. He's going to come out to the top of the box and right at the start of the six. It will carry him off the keeper. And here's Virginia's first chance to set something up from the far side flag. A corner opportunity coming for UVA. It's to be handled by Mangarov. First such look will belong to UVA. A header to clear it. Fancy footwork from the Cavaliers to keep possession, but then you get the whistle and things will head the other direction. Christopher Grabas, our referee, Larry Stroud, our AR, Michael Gorsinger, the other of the ARs tonight at the officiating group for this contest between High Point and Virginia. A flag raised as UVA assist with the first of those. Now a foul call. So the Cavaliers notch the first shot. They have the first corner chance. And force a, a save from Karen on the high point side. Initial test on the other end of the field and allowing it to simply bounce up into his grasp is the Virginia keeper. And so you have a look at both of those in goal along the way in this one. to the other end and it's rolled out there by Karen. Carolina's connection and goal for Virginia. She get one more look before this is semi-cleared on a header. There's a Coastal Carolina transfer. across the state line in South Carolina as they battle tonight. A team from Central North Carolina, this high point squad. A Virginia foul as uh, Maya is a little slower getting back to his feet. He'll have a set piece from distance. Still alive before a right-footed clear for UVA. And this in the end will carry him away to no consequence. So Maya there, we Virginia. talked about his impact. Maya, Huntley Kruger, 
Yants. All goal scorers and a 4-0 victory over UNC Asheville in conference action. Most recently for High Point. And again, that capped a week that was marked by this squad playing the Wolfpack of NC State to a nothing-nothing draw in their most recent chance to line up against an ACC opponent. Final non-conference chance for both teams. We mentioned Virginia wraps things up with another team from the state of North Carolina. In fact, it will be the North Carolina Tar Heels to close out the year. High Point will welcome in the Winthrop Eagles on the first day of November to finish the regular season slate in the Big South. But an important win on this night, and in terms of a resume building, you talk about what can be secured from an eye test standpoint, certainly for now the 14th ranked team in the country, Virginia, with the way they have performed down the stretch. This is an NCAA tournament type test. Out of the non-conference slate that when they come late in the year like this are a really good barometer of how you are set up for the type of matchups that you'll see beyond your own postseason tournament in the respective leagues. The Big South and the ACC and beyond for that matter. Possession was heavy Virginia early. Now some back and forth. And in fact, the stat categories evening up a bit. A shot apiece, one on goal apiece. Requiring a save of each of the keepers thus far. <laughs> Alex Abril a moment ago for high point. And Anor, as we documented much earlier in the contest for Virginia. The two having taken the look so far. Cross toward the top of the six. And eventually Virginia is able to gather it up and turn it aside. We talked to McRobb and Amaya. They'll certainly be the challenges provided the gentleman filling up your screen tonight. Five goals and four goals respectively. Ignacio the other though. Three goals to his credit. It is that trio that has led high point. And capitalizing on scoring chances this year. the Anor brace and his game winner which was just in the, the third minute of play in that most recent outing for UVA as they picked uh, the best of times a Commonwealth clash battle with Virginia Tech to notch that quickest goal of the season and more than once nor having scored in the first handful of minutes in the first five minutes of a contest. But though he took the early look in this one, we find ourselves with nearly 15 minutes gone. And just his shot standing as the only chance for Virginia thus far.
mentioned that the series with this high point team had been split fairly evenly. But you have to go way on back. October of 48 for a high point win. Here's a shot from distance. That's going to be high above the crossbar. And it'll simply run the shot total a little higher. Anchi getting into the mix in that way. Before a quick foul and now a battle for it near the midfield. Twenty-seven of forty-eight. Two nothing. The final. The last win for this high point team in a series that has been split three, three, and one all time. But again, all the recent history trending UVA and certainly in the George Gelnovac era. Virginia head coach now nearly three decades and nearly 370 wins into his Virginia career. How pleased he must be with the way this team has performed of late, really. Answering the bell. I think about a couple of setbacks in conference against Duke and Notre Dame, but of distant memory now with the way this team has performed and certainly against their rival the last time out, according to script. Always seeming to find a way to get them in tip-top shape and playing toward the ceiling of their potential when it matters most. With the postseason coming at the next turn of the calendar, think on this. So many different pieces. We talked earlier in the year about the depth that this squad had and how it was going to take some time for roles to be defined. You knew where the expectations were as a unit, but how would those individual pieces of the puzzle come together? A journey to that end, to say the least. But paying dividends now. This laid off and cross and a right-footed look just high once again, Ignacio. Attempting to make it a couple consecutive with scoring impact, but it is not to be, as it'll simply be a third shot for High Point. Credit the visitors from High Point. This now runs the shot total to a 3-1 split. in favor of the visiting Panthers. But just the one shot that was on target to this point as only a single shot out of the three had been on goal. But with possession trending high point of late. Zach Haynes and his staff Certainly pleased with what they're seeing from this group right now. And it continues. Numbers were there for high point. Here's another chance in the box. Well-placed Virginia defense will turn aside any further looks for a Brill. Comes all the way near side to Carson Kendall now. about that two nothing score way on back in high points favor. That also was the score the last time these teams met. 
back in the 2021 season. A 2-0 Virginia win back on the second day of September. And 21 right here on this pitch. Foul called against UVA. Chance for Jefferson Amaya to go over and weigh his options. As Anchi was sent down to the deck. To a team known for how good they are on corners. You also watch set pieces from this distance and high point with a couple of them in the early going. But it takes Virginia no time on this occasion to win the ball, although right back come the Panthers, and there may be a window. That's deflected up and just able to get a paw on it and knock it over the top. To turn it aside is a Virginia keeper. Corner kick, high point. And here's one of those corner kick opportunities. Seventieth on the season. Results in a header, but that also will sail wide okay. into the left side. So the initial corner chance for High Point, much like Virginia's earlier in the match, fruitless in terms of scoring. Well, you, you think about, and we talked about the work of the keepers and how good both these teams have been. Cavaliers with those four wins and a couple of draws the last six times out. And conceding just a, a trio of goals with that many, three clean sheets in that snapshot across this portion of the season for Virginia. So both these teams knowing a little bit about holding their opponents quiet. You can talk so much about the scoring that they can provide, but it's been that smothering defense and the effective work. Between the posts for these two teams that has been just as important and stellar seasons once more in their respective conferences. A wide open real estate on the far side. Amaya gives chase and then plays this long. It's going to be a, a long run for Ignacio. He chases it down short of the goal line, but then runs into that Virginia back line once more. about the clean sheets on the high point side. Just the one goal allowed Gardner Webb since the contest at Radford back on October 2nd. Defeated Longwood 4-0, Presbyterian 1-0, played NC State to the draw as we mentioned back on the 17th, and then of course the 4-0 win on the road at UNC Asheville the last time out. That has been the stretch run to this point for high point. Oh, oh. 
setting up for quite the showdown in Big South Conference play with that Winthrop match looming. High point at 5-0-1, Winthrop at 3-0-2. Those are the only two teams without a loss in Big South play. Even if Winthrop's overall record is at 4-7-2, a battle-tested squad that will try and take at least that unbeaten mark for a spin when they tangle to close out the Big South regular season. Tony Pineda set for the throw-in. Pineda who's played in 14 with a couple of goals and just that many assists for a total of six points along the way this year. Also among the large group having scored multiple goals this season. Double digit total. 10 of them having scored two or more on the high point stat sheet. Spin back and forth. High point leading a plus three advantage in shots and Virginia trying to snatch possession away as they move toward the attacking third in the first half action. Both teams with just a single shot on goal. Both teams with one look from the corner. But in overall shots, in overall possession, high point impressive in the recent stretch. Virginia trying to change that right here. Looks like this is going to be taken away from Reese Miller, who works together with Rome to grab it right back. You saw his reaction as that will be out and belong to High Point. Expectations clear on this occasion. You see how she working away. And the picture tells the story. You saw the response of our referee on throw in from Carson Kendall, punched forward by Amaya. Virginia there to respond. Another thing you notice when you glance across the season for Virginia, this is a team that has been really good. And close ones along the way, the type of game you would expect tonight. Got a Virginia player down. And everything coming to a halt at the 16-13 mark is Tiam along with Gashi both over to check on a teammate. Everything is going to be okay. Chance to catch a breather as they do get Bela up to his feet, kind of set up under his own power, and now is trotting off. But uh, again, a number of players taking this opportunity to catch a bit of a breather. Hydrate at the 16-13 mark. 
Nothing on the board between 14th ranked Virginia and High Point. Entertaining back and forth between these two. And though most of possession early belonged to Virginia, High Point in the longest stretch of this first half. Accumulated four shots. Gave themselves several looks at the Virginia goal, but to this point, as we work back at it now, neither team able to secure that key moment. Talking about Virginia in close contests. Eight of 14 have been decided by a goal or less. And Virginia could in those moments unbeaten when it's a single goal at 5-0 oh, and 3. And it puts plenty of attention on moments just like this when you know it's the kind of night that perhaps just one will make all the difference between two teams expected to be destined for postseason opportunities. These moments mean so much. Second corner for UVA. Boy, coming out of goal. Karen and putting a hand on it himself. Just to buy a hair. To turn that aside. In the end, it's a goal kick. The second of Virginia's corners turned aside. A save a piece for both keepers thus far. And though Virginia was credited with a second shot there as it was added to the account of Gashi, it uh, did not turn into anything further. We dip inside 14 and a half minutes remaining in the opening 45. High point now back to work. That stayed alive at the foot of Kruger. And there's Pela no worse for wear as he comes charging up to take command of it. traffic before eventually working it to Reese Miller. To him. Top of the six. Finds a window to shoot. It'll carry him off and into the back of the net. And Virginia is on the board. So the Cavaliers with TM staying relentless inside the box until he finally gets just enough on it to work it by the high point keeper for a one nothing advantage. Let's take a look at TM one more time. Gets just enough of a window and perhaps uh, provided some disruption in the vision of the keeper Josh Karen. And Virginia with 13 and a half to play in the opening period on the strength of a 32nd minute goal. From that gentleman has a one nothing advantage. What a year it's been, fourth goal. Already was sitting in double digits in points, one of two alongside Anor in that category. Thanks to the four assists along the way, but picks up a goal to match that total as he now sits at four in each of the key categories to give Virginia the first half advantage. Well, still behind high point 
in terms of shots as it was the third that made the difference for UVA to four that had been notched by the Panthers, but the one that matters belonging to the home team at the moment. And just as quickly as he had a moment to celebrate. Tiam is to check that side as the high point foul. Found Virginia's goal scorer. Unassisted in the 32nd minute. He who had, along with Visa, been the distributor this season. When you talk about assist, instead picking up that fourth goal. And continues a trend of scoring for Virginia team that, as we told you, has had multiple goals each of the last two times out. A 3-0 victory over Virginia Tech following that 2-1 win over Pitt. Play back to Lamb. And a long chase being given here by Reese Miller, but foot race belongs to Kara. Cavaliers looking To build a little further momentum with what would be a third consecutive win going into the showdown with UNC on the 27th, which will wrap the regular campaign. So far, so good, as it's according to plan in this first half. Singer. Fresh legs into the contest a few moments ago. Islander also along with Lamb, that trio, the first group off the bench to see action in this first half for Virginia. TM setting the pace one more time before this ends up down near the goal. It stays in the box for a bit before eventually being sent out to where Citron ultimately plays it back. And now Singer comes all the way back across to Miller. A little back and forth between those two. And they had Tia marked that time. A couple of high point defenders obviously giving him plenty of attention after his impact already in this first half. Goes right through the wickets into the other side. Stepping in to win the ball. Here's High Point trying to make something happen in transition. Carson Kindle with a head of steam. Trying to get some inside positioning there was a nor. It was not to be. Stepping in again, the takeaway as it's quickly back to Amaya. Come on, come on, come on. 
played down the far side. But Paul Visa, enough athletic ability to get there and then turn it away. Substitution for high point entry is number 25. Matt Brucker coming in for number nine. Kaya Inicio. Also entering for the Cavaliers, number 18, Kobe Ubogu. Coming in for number nine, Stephen Anor Giampi. Also entering number 32, Parker Sloan. Coming in for Reese Miller, number 19. Well, you can see substitutions being made as we dip inside of eight minutes remaining in the opening half. Pineda getting a chance to catch his breath. Ignacio subbed out. Matt Brucker coming in, and Miller gets a chance to take a seat along with Anor as Ubogu and Sloan. We'll see time for Virginia. It's Ramirez, by the way, who came in for Pineda, as you saw the, the change being made on both sides. Again, both Anor and Miller now taking a seat for UVA. Sloan and Ubogu joining Lamb Islander and Singer as those seeing first action in the latter stages of this half for Virginia. A goal in the 32nd minute for Tiam as he worked uh, in what was a crowded box. Was able to punch one on by a, a couple of defenders and ultimately by the high point keeper for the one nothing advantage. Interestingly enough, one of just three shots and one of just a couple on goal for Virginia in this first half. The, the shots belonging to Anor early on. Kashi had one and then TM the difference maker. We got a player to keep an eye on as it looked like Islander was down for UVA. And after continuation, well, check that and get a closer look. That's Ubogu, who actually went to the deck for Virginia. Looks to be reaching for that shoulder after going down not long after his entry into the match. Let's see if we can get a sense of what happened here. It was off of the continuing action, and there it was. You saw the collision. Uh, that sent Ubogu to the deck. The training staff along with Paul Visa both out to check on a teammate at the 554 mark. Everything brought to a halt once more. Hard foul. There have been a combined seven of them. Five whistled against Virginia, just a couple against High Point in this first half. But we have seen more than once play have to be stopped as a result of what's been a very physical first half. The Virginia goal scorer grabbing the water bottle while Strategies discussed, and more importantly than anything else, Komi Ubogu is tended to. And it's going to be helped off to some degree by the Virginia training staff at the 554 mark. So one of a handful of players just a few minutes into his time, and the last thing you want to see as you work toward the closing stages of the season is some of those we talked about roles and how the pieces of the puzzle have come together for Virginia. 
So critical for both these teams who plan to pursue championship glory in their conference and beyond to keep everyone healthy when it matters most. Let's see what the long-term status is going to be for Ubogu as time rolls along. For now, it's going to be Tally inserted into the contest for Virginia. Left foot to wind it out to Carson Kendall from Josh Karen, the goalkeeper. Ham off a high point player and a throw in coming for Kendall. TM trying to sell it Virginia. Though it'll stay with the Panthers. A throw in well read by Parker Sloan. And it looks as if a card is going to be assessed Sloan. After Matt Brucker goes hard to the deck. Noah Holmes there, who is filling up your screen now. So I mentioned a handful of fouls called. A number of them on Virginia in this first half. But this is the first time that a caution has been issued, and it's going to be a high point set piece as they look for a first half equalizer. Jefferson Amaya there to take it. Looking over to the sideline to see exactly how the crew out of the Big South opts to attack this. He'll play it into traffic, a header flicked toward that near side post, but it is smothered up and it remains 1-0 Virginia. done by the junior keeper and Coastal Carolina transfer. We talked earlier about the talented nature of both these keepers. Playing in an eighth contest to this point. Everything had been split down the middle with Holden Brown in terms of overall numbers and of time in goal the 22 saves having been secured and a percentage of 786 along with those three shutouts and we talked about all the clean sheets for Virginia as a team those are the individual performances and you saw a snapshot of just how good the key transfer can be right there. 316 to play in the opening half. These teams separated on the strength of a TM goal in the 32nd minute. Which came in the flow of action for the Virginia lead. And just as we begin to talk about his impact tonight. The Virginia goal scorer down after another high point foul. Following the Ubogu departure just moments ago. Virginia's premier performer on the night a little slow to get up. As he was all tangled up with Carson Kendall. Seems no worse for wear as he trots away. Chasing it all the way to the goal line was Axel Islander for Virginia. Two and change remaining in the opening half. A 
couple of teams both coming in with plenty of momentum. I think on this, the last outright loss for High Point all the way back in the late stages of the month of September. And for Virginia, you got to go all the way back to the same area in that Notre Dame contest as the Cavaliers have secured something in each of their last six times out, trending toward that in the seventh. And by the way, that most recent loss for High Point came at the hands of the team Virginia just beat in the Commonwealth Clash. It was a 3-2 setback at the hands of Virginia Tech. Only the second time this year that High Point had experienced a loss against uh, Marshall, the other, when you talk about the type of schedule this team plays. But interestingly enough, the most recent loss for High Point, and there's some time between there and here, that very hokey squad that Virginia picked up its most recent victory against. Final half minute of these first 45 marked by five high point shots to just three of them for the Cavaliers, but the one that matters, which we will no doubt revisit going to our halftime break coming from Tia. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. Brendan Lamb content to let the final seconds roll off of the first half game clock, and there's the man responsible for Virginia's lead in the 32nd minute. As from the heart of the box, he was able to punch one by the high point keeper, and as a result, it will be a one nothing score. You, you consider his journey to this point, going from the Commonwealth from his time at Radford all the way to the West Coast where he played for Terry Voss, the former UVA associate head coach who was here on grounds from 14 to 17. 10 goals, nine assists, 29 points with the Beavers. Led him to that Elite Eight appearance in 2021 and then was all Pac-12 leading the team in scoring in 2022. And he has followed up nicely in his return to the Commonwealth for Virginia again here. Now with four goals alongside four assists on the season. And on the strength of his effort, it's one nothing Virginia. Here's a set piece as Visa will take it. And Virginia looks for more. That will get by. And the Cavaliers will double the advantage right out of the gate here in the second period. They will gather up and celebrate surrounding Axel Allender. As the Cavaliers, for all the talk about impact on set pieces tonight, it is Virginia who uses the early second half set piece. In fact, in the, the final of the first minute, I should say, of the second half. Axel Ollander will put the finishing touches on the work of Paul Visa, who sent a beautiful ball into the heart of traffic that Virginia turns into its second goal of the night. 2-0 Cavaliers. A familiar score in this rivalry. We talked about it, the, the last win for each of these teams, even though you have to go back a ways for the high point victory by a count of 2-0. And that's the score that is in effect now as Islander, as the celebration shows, has now put together his moment of the season. As he becomes the latest on the Virginia roster to notch points on the year. With well, his first goal of this 2023 20, campaign. So the native of Senegal, TM getting things started in the first half and now it's the senior out of Norway. You think about the career paths for these two. I mean, the, the James Madison 
time at the early stages of Hollander's career. So it's a, a couple of players that started out in the Commonwealth at Radford and, and JMU respectively that found their way to the flagship program ultimately and have made their mark on this night with the two Virginia goals. Can often be a, a twisting and turning path from those early moments to this one. But those two finding their own in those Virginia Cavaliers colors on this cool October night. And that opens so much up as Virginia now with the benefit of his goal in the 46th minute. margin having increased. They chased down near the face of the goal. Back to Visa. Off of Pela, far side. UVA content to play this back for a kick and it all results in a throw in just beyond the touchline right in the midst of things from Carson Kendall. Now you know how highly regarded this high point squad is in the Big South year in, year out. We documented that for you across the first 45. Of course, the 16th ranked recruiting class once again in, in the latest rankings for Fifth year head coach, Coach Haynes and his squad. So Virginia, yes, in, in a non-conference scenario tonight, but still playing against one of those perennial powers and a team very familiar with tournament soccer and championship environments, certainly in the Big South in pursuit of another here in 2023. A double team covers up Amaya and takes it away. Through traffic as the two goal scorers work together, it ends up being TM and Islander in the same general area before it's reset from over in front of that ACC network sign. just kind of trickled into the air off the foot of Yance. So a couple of goals being worked by the Big South Freshman of the Week. Josh Caron, who has been so good in goal this season. Can Virginia come away with another? That rattles around. And a lunging effort as that sails way on beyond the goal line by Caron. There he is. We'll have to withstand another Cavalier quarter. He notched two shutouts last week. The NC State matchup and the Asheville matchup that we talked about in the Big South. But has seen Virginia score a couple, latest of which came from the guy taking the corner for UVA. And that's swatted away by Karen on cue to some degree. He was not the only to receive honors when the Big South announced its superlatives this week. As Anchi was also on the list. as the Defensive Player of the Week in the Big South. So the Defensive Player of the Week and the Freshman of the Week on display out of the Big South here tonight. Played all the way across to 
Visa, who's still in the box, and he'll lay that for an assist look, and here comes the celebration one more time. And it is executed well by Virginia, and a third Cavaliers goal to match their total from that Commonwealth clash the last time out. And why not, if you're gonna get the job done on this night, just go ahead and double your pleasure in this second half. Take a look at this as Islander, who handled business for the first time in the 46th minute, and has another on the assist of Gashi and Visa in the 52nd minute. And just like that, it is 3-0 Virginia with the Cavaliers coming to life in the early stages of this second half. And what was such a good week and has been such a solid year for the high point keeper and the freshman of the week in the Big South. Having its challenges in recent moments as the 14th ranked team in the country begins to flex its muscles offensively, this Virginia team again led the broadcast talking about how this team is surging toward the tape in ACC play. If you missed it, in the early stages and maybe you haven't been following things as closely of late. Virginia notching double digit points in its most recent stretch in the ACC to get near the top of the division, second place in the division now. And really taking advantage of this non-conference opportunity now, three nothing. And that looked like Reese Miller was caught Maybe right in the mouth there as he went to the ground. And it's going to take a moment before he pops back up to his feet. Seems ready to go now. Header takes care of it. Aiden O'Connor appeared to be the player to take care of that. And now here's Bo Gantz again. He'll play it forward with a left-footed look, and that's going to sell high above the crossbar. It stays 3-0 Virginia. Well, the assists for Gashi and Visa. A sixth assist for Visa on the year. That's a team high watermark. And a first for Gashi, who already had a goal on the season and runs his total a notch higher by setting the table for Axel Allender's second goal of the night and the season. What a night for the Norwegian alongside the first half work of who once again served as the separator, giving Virginia the 1-0 lead in the first before Islanders' two goals have really created a little breathing room, holding high point at arm's length. Again, O'Connor steps in there, boots that away. Cavaliers in their last three matches now with eight goals, multi-goal efforts in each of the last three. Virginia having outscored its opponents and this gap seeming to widen by the match now at a clip of 24 to 14 on the season and that's Ten second half goals now for Virginia on the year. And that worked its way off the foot of Jack Singer. And a high point corner is earned here. Remember, this is the area. Those set pieces, particularly the corners, where high point has been so effective across the course of the year as we documented in this first half. And the Panthers use one of these to inch a little closer. Try to provide some answer to the three Virginia goals. A 
Bentley. Back there for another look from Finn McRobb, who's been the premier performer in such moments. But too many Virginia jerseys between he and the goal. And the third high point corner opportunity of the night goes for naught. Three corners for High Point, three corners for Virginia. High Point still having outshot the Cavaliers by a count of 8-5. But four of Virginia's shots have been on goal and three of them have found the back of the net. Thus a commanding lead is in effect for UVA. Who's tonight trying to run their stretch of unbeaten contest to seven. It was already at its longest stretch of the season with six in a row unblemished. Finding itself at peak performance, heading toward the postseason. You saw the defensive player of the week in the Big South, Anchi, alongside tonight's initial goal scorer. Tia. Nashio lays this out there for Yance. And in the end, it's going to be a goal kick for Virginia. Substitution for the Cavaliers. Entering is number eight, Brendan Lamb. Coming in for number 31, Humberto Pela. Lamb in, a little bit of a breather for Pela coming. Now it's not just the stretch of victories, you're kind of talking about that for Virginia that catches your attention. It's the three total goals conceded with the three clean sheets and the fact of two of the three wins in the stretch we're talking about have been against ranked foes. And this one, though, it would be of the non-conference variety if Virginia can make this 3-0 lead stand up across the final half hour plus. It would be against the team at the top of its league expecting to play in the postseason as well and looking to play something on the scoreboard for the first time here. And High Point looking for something to celebrate. Trotting away is Pineda. As in the 60th minute, High Point taking care of making sure it will not be a clean sheet tonight, regardless of the ultimate outcome. Take a look at this. The answer for High Point comes in flow as they draw the keeper out. And Pineda puts the Panthers on the board. Third goal of the year. We talked about how there had been double digit scores of the multi-goal variety already this season. 11 different players that have notched a goal, 10 of which have notched more than one. And the gentleman among them, Pineda now 
running his total just a bit higher. Couple of assists alongside his now three goals on the year for High Point as well. Quickly whistled for the foul on the back side of that and now one against Yance. Panthers hoping to parlay a first success in what has already been a second half marked by scoring. Into further impact, looking for a window in which to shoot. There was not one for Kruger, but Ignacio tried from distance. And you can see the reaction of Aiden O'Connor. Imploring that group. Ahead of this high point corner at the 28 45 mark remaining in our contest. So another corner chance, and all of a sudden, another quick one from the Panthers, and things would have tightened back up to a single goal differential. But Virginia handles this nicely. Hans plays that long, but the into the grasp of the keeper. Connor trots away. Saw a little bit of an effort from Anor to place himself in a scoring spot. There he is, part of the box again. Visa in some open spaces. Nifty move to get open himself. This laid off to Gashi, who had one of the assists on the first of the Islander goals. That thoughts toward perhaps a little more than the brace he has notched tonight. And that up against the netting way beyond the goal for a Virginia goal kick. Well, the answer has been there for Tony Pineda and company. As it will not be a clean sheet on either side tonight. But of ultimate importance, Virginia is still in command with a two goal advantage. You think about how big those two goals from Islander in the early stages of this second half have been. Plenty of communication coming from both these squads. It's Going to be chased to the touchline, just kept alive. And sink to Ignacio. And freshman Karen and ultimately Yance, a little back and forth between this group. indicating it'll belong to High Point. That's the throw in. Oh, 
Virginia. Offside Virginia. And possession to high point. That played far side. Cavaliers with Miller up to contest. Plays that right off of Yance. Virginia subs coming as Miller is going to be lifted in favor of Norris. And on the first of the goal scorers tonight. Tiam, who scored in the first half for UVA. If you just happen to be joining us for the first time or finding your way back to us, Tiam scoring in the 32nd minute. It was 1-0 Virginia at the intermission, but a couple of quick goals in the second half from Axel Islander giving Virginia a 3-0 lead. And now with High Point having recently Notch day first on the night. It sits at 3 1 with 22 and a half to play. Tony Pineda pulled down, and for the second time tonight, a caution being assessed. The earlier one going against Parker Sloan, and now Jack Singer in the 68th minute. receiving the yellow. Substitution for High Point is number five, Carson Gittle for number three, Ben Beeman. Now High Point also going to make some number 10, substitutions. Carson Kendall among eight, those coming Brandon back. Kruger. And you see Brendan Kruger. who is going to be greeted right in front of that high point bench. Set piece coming for Jefferson Amaya. Amaya held without a shot tonight. Remember, it's four goals and six assists, leaving him top in points. And he's going to play this straight on, and it is turned away. Decided to go right at the Virginia keeper. And well handled here to keep it 3-1. What a job done by the Coastal Transfer. Joey Petroni tonight has really been what you would expect. You, you think about the time split between Petroni and Holden Brown, and it has been Petroni in there throughout this night. 22 saves coming in. He's now run that total to 25 with that his third of the evening. And yes, the one goal having worked by him to the credit of Pineda a little bit earlier. Um, but he does a nice job there when they decide to attack him straight on. 
tee him back up now. Allender. Back to Lamb, and then here's Visa. Inside 20 minutes to play for UVA squad. 14th in the country, and on the verge of one more ACC chance before the postseason. And attempting to make the best use of a final non-conference environment. I've talked a couple of times about Virginia surging to second place in, in the Coastal Division. The total at 13 point standpoint at 4, 2, and 1. Notre Dame at 5, 0, oh, and 2, having knocked 17. And then the next closest to Virginia now, Duke sitting behind the Cavaliers with a, a total of 10 at 3, 3, and 1 in conference play. That's the way things are shaking out in the Coastal Division at this point. In North Carolina, well, in behind that, two, two, and three. The point total at nine for UVA's next opponent. As things have taken shape in the closing stages of the Coastal race, this sent from outside the box. Okay, and Visa, along with Singer, realizing it was going to go beyond the goal, and they'll let it trickle out for a Virginia goal kick. And while we're at it, discussing the way things are breaking down in the ACC, Wake Forest at 14, Clemson 13, Syracuse 10. Those are real-time numbers in the Atlantic. As it is very much in play going into the final days of the regular season. Hollander, who's been busy from a scoring standpoint tonight, slow to get up. But to the delight of the home fans, Axel Hollander has been a big part of things. Able to continue without trouble. Connor putting a foot into that. He heard the reaction of the fans. As every positive sequence for Virginia right now makes it a little tougher on high point. And takes critical moments off that second half game clock. Challenge that, Pineda. Lamb to Will Citron. Think about what that grouping has meant to Virginia this year. Haven't really necessarily zeroed in on them with some of the other playmakers tonight, but Visa, Citron, and Aiden O'Connor. Gashi picking up one of the assists tonight for UVA. Reese Miller, whose name we've called over and over again. Filling up space for a UVA team up 3-1. There is Gashi. As Islander puts things back in action with 15 and change to play.
Ashley making his 12th start of the season, match that jersey number on this night. And the assist he notched, his first such of the year, alongside a single goal for Virginia thus far. For Visa, when he picked up his earlier sixth, which is the high watermark and assists on the Virginia stat sheet. Both of those coming in the early stages of the second half. In fact, Visa credited with assists on both of Ollinger's goals in the end. Substitutions entering for high point. And has run his total number eight, Brennan Cougar, entering for to number seven four, on the year. As she assisting on the second of the Islander goals. And there is Visa as he works his way off to a nice round of applause with the good work he has done tonight. Another two assist effort for UVA. Pineda, who had the goal for high point a bit earlier. Also coming off in this group of subs is Noah Holmes is back in. And Brendan Kruger, who had the assist on the Pineda goal, is back in to action for high point as Jefferson Amaya is coming off. And if you're wondering who relieved Visa, it was Parker Sloan who came on for Virginia in support of the catalyst offensively for UVA. So much of the offense going through Paul Visa this season. And Orr trying to chase that down. Anor tonight, just the, the single shot, it was on goal. It came very early in the contest. And nothing for the Virginia standout youngster since. Of course, you always keep an eye on what his impact has been in a given match when you consider his 10 goals easily out in front of the rest of the pack for UVA. First Cavalier since 2019 to reach 10 goals. Worth mentioning who he's alongside. First things first, something potentially coming together for High Point. Turned aside by Parker Sloan and the kick is coming before it slides away without Making sure you're aware. Of course, you're talking one of the greats, Daryl DK. The last time a Cavalier hit 10 goals before the work that has been done by Anor this year. Here's the high point corner, trying to get back within one, and Anor somewhat on cue. He has the header to initially clear that out of there and then uses his left foot to really get rid of it for UVA. So for all the talk about his scoring, he reminds you some of the other things that he can provide outside the scoring realm. And we were talking ACC standings a little bit earlier. If you're wondering where that sits ACC-wise, this is snatched out of the sky by Petruni. And the scoring chance for high point will end. Second in the ACC in total goals and his seven in ACC play leading the way among conference scores. So good all season, but so much of it when it has really mattered in conference action. And, and remember, it took a little while to get jump started for Anori. He had those five goals in three preseason contests and you thought after the way he performed in the friendlies. Wow, what a year it's going to be. But through the first 
handful of matches, just a handful of shots to his credit in those handful of matches. And boy, once it started, the floodgates really opened. And again, put your name alongside the likes of Daryl DK, one of those uh, among that last group of Virginia Cavaliers to make a run toward the College Cup before embarking on his outstanding next level career. To put your name alongside that saying something. Here's the first of the scorers tonight working together with the other of Virginia's goal scorers. More than once we have seen the combo of Tiam and Islander work side by side. And we're trying maybe to add a little more to Virginia's total here tonight, but it is turned aside. Inside nine minutes remaining. Goals in the 32nd minute, the 46th minute, and the 52nd minute. And allowing Virginia to build a 3 0 lead that now sits at 3 1. And before Anor can get to it this go round, it was punched away by the high point keeper, Karan. Talk about the keepers tonight. We documented Petruni, the three saves, the one goal allowed. Virginia looking for what would be a fourth, but that's alongside a save that was picked up early by Josh Karen. Karen, who came in as a freshman of the week. You talk about a freshman keeper on one side, highly decorated in the Big South, and we were just talking about Virginia's standout youngster who, though he has been quiet according to his own standards tonight, has put together one of the monster years, the reason UVA has been able to come into its own when it has mattered in conference play down the stretch. Connor plays that long. Looking for a window, but this is going to roll right into the grasp of Kara as it stays 3 1. Scenario now where, as hard as it may be to believe, one week from tomorrow, first round action in the ACC begins postseason tournament wise. And for Virginia, and this is the final non conference tune up before the finale right here at Clockner against North Carolina on Friday, a, a match you can see on the ACC Network at 7 p.m. This has been just the type of night that Hoos fans hoped they would see when they decided to come out to Clockner and witness this battle between a couple of teams likely, very likely destined for NCAA tournament action in 2023. No high point in a hands full scenario with the 14th ranked team in the country. The goals that this group has still very much on the table in the Big South with the one match against Winthrop remaining ahead of a postseason run of their own. And remember, this is a high point team, and yes, there's no moral victories on a night like this, but they've outshot Virginia 11-6 across the course of the match. That number may climb further here. Maybe not in this very moment, thanks to a header from O'Connor, but battling to hang with it is 
Yance, and then eventually on Chi. And with a handout to help Alex Abril up. High point trying to make something happen here at the four and a half minute mark. And with Islander down a little bit longer, play going to be stopped to preserve as much time as possible for this Panthers group to battle back. But it finishes up with a November 1st, 7 p.m. meeting at home against Winthrop for a high point squad that again has performed very well dating all the way back to a loss to Virginia Tech on the 26th of September the, the only three losses on the year as it would stand going into that Winthrop game Marshall, Virginia Tech and UVA it speaks to both the schedule having been played by high point and the level to which this team has played all season just what you would expect from one of the standards out of the Big South. Set piece from just outside the box. And it rattles around in there, an effort to try and clean that up and punch it on through. And now an attempt to sell it. As a corner, but it was not to be. It'll be a goal kick for Virginia. Saw so Ramirez was right in the thick of that. But take a look at the chance that almost arrived for Noah Holmes there. No possession will be Virginia's on a key call and a goal kick to keep it at 3-1 when all is said and done on that sequence. Mangroff came in, Anor receiving a, a nice ovation. Didn't notch anything more than the single shot tonight. It was on goal, it was very early. But he still was right in the heart of the Virginia attack as he was among those keeping the foot on the accelerator, providing the scoring opportunities for the likes of TM and Islander. The duo responsible for the three Virginia goals. Inside three minutes remaining and a methodical walk to the throw in for Parker Sloan. Stays with Virginia. Sakuli is content to leave it just beyond the touchline momentarily. As the Cavaliers try and salt away a ninth victory on the season. Well, and tonight was about preparing for the ACC finale to come in the postseason on the other side of Friday night's meeting with North Carolina. Virginia did so completely according to plan. Chased by Jack Singer. A Linfeld throw in, Cooper Linfeld into things. One more chance for Petruni. And he again is equal to the task as he has been throughout the night. Three saves for Joey Petruni and goal for Virginia. Did allow just the single goal, which was scored after the Cavaliers had built a 3-0 lead. 
Tony Pineda on the assist to Brendan Kruger in the 60th minute. The only moment that High Point was able to push anything by the Virginia keeper. One minute, one minute to play in the half. Attempting to make one more push to do so. Though it is initially handled by UVA. And then rattles off uh, the white jerseys of the High Point Panthers for perhaps one more Joey Petruni goal kick. Coach Gail Navach's squad doing exactly what they came to in front of the home. Faithful on the pitch at Clockner. In this final non-conference matchup of the year. Nine, Closing eight, seconds. We'll roll off that three, game clock. Two, one. And Virginia with a win over High Point out of the Big South. Improving to 9-3-3 three, and three on the year in the nationally ranked Hoos. One step closer to an even stronger finish. Down the stretch in 2023 and again, seven o'clock against North Carolina on Friday night. A chance to put their final situation in stone in ACC play after surging toward the top. 